Okay, welcome back to another episode of The Process. And we're doing another sketching video over here of an airport. Got some great feedback from y'all, so thank you for the feedback. It's really awesome to hear, um, you know, what you guys are thinking, what you want to see more of, and, and I will definitely get into that. So, let's jump into it. So, as requested, I do have some reference on my upper left. The reference that I gathered are just a few photos. And I want to just draw from the photos as a study. Now, this sketch direction isn't something uh, super conceptual. But it's more of just practicing sketching, getting a good point of view, um, you know, putting in some of the needed information to get a scene going. And in particular, I don't know why, but I just love the language of airports, just love the uh, shape dynamics and, you know, the storytelling that's in an airport. So, um, and I guess, I guess it's just something that I've, I've always been drawn to as a kid. So let's draw it. <laughs> anyway, uh, enough with the jokes. Let's uh, let's get into it. So initially right here, I'm just starting to uh, try to find out the proportions. You know, I'm doing a sketch that's pretty small. I, I uh, threw open a an initial, you know, rectangle to try to capture the overall composition. But as you can see, um, I'm pretty off, you know. The placement of the airplane to the, to the rectangle, to, you know, to the actual canvas is pretty off. So it's okay. Who cares? You know, we make adjustments. That's why we have an eraser. No, no big, no big deal, right? So let's just keep going. It's all about creating. So right now I'm just trying to figure out the proportions of the plane. Uh, the proportions are interesting and I'm trying to use the most basic primitives that we have, you know, circles, squares, triangles, and using any 3D forms within those basic shapes like spheres and cylinders and cubes or uh, volumetric rectangular cubes, you know, stuff like that. And as I'm trying to basically just get some of the information in here, it's, um, it's going to come out in a way where I think it might start working out. Okay. Uh, I just want to get, I just want to get some of the basic information as well as some very important landmarks. You know, some of the landmarks here, kind of like on a human anatomy, where you see the pelvic bones and the shoulder blades and the, you know, the collarbone to see these landmarks on the anatomy. On the plane, there are these types of uh, points as well, you know. And some of them are the engines, you know, the turbine engines under the wings. Those are very iconic, recognizable landmarks. Um, the wheels touching the ground the winglets in the back, and even the black stripe that's on the center of the fuselage. Those are really good recognizable landmarks that I feel that if we get those right, it could hopefully capture a good, what, like 75 per 80 percent of the image, you know, in a, in a pretty good way. So that's what I want to work on first over here. Now this drawing all, is all in real time. I'm going to try to do a real time um, video today so it's gonna be a little bit longer it's gonna be a little bit more explained and a, just a bit more thorough you know and and one of the things that's important when we're sketching like this is don't go fast you know I'm not trying to make the perfect marks and I'm not trying to make the perfect uh, excuse me I'm not trying to make the perfect you know lines or anything like that but what I am trying to do is just I'm trying to get information and that's really important you know when we do concept design and illustration, we're trying to capture information, not just to trying to tell a story, not just trying to tell a narrative and show a cool design and function and all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, we're just trying to show, you know, show an image. So let's try to get a majority of that image in there, you know, with with these basic elements. All right, a little bit of adjusting. Now, as I start making marks, and I start looking at the overall relationship between the fuselage and the wings and the engines, I start seeing that my proportions are a little off. So let's go ahead and just adjust that, you know? The um, couple of perspective lines on the ground. This is something that helps me able to see the ground plane in a much more clear way. Uh, so you can see the, the perspective lines that I do. I kind of, I almost, I'm not trying to draw like the perfect line, but I tend to have these squiggly lines and I put a lot of dots to help kind of map where the line is going. So There's a different style of sketching and I know we all have different styles of sketching 
and I don't think there's any one one way that everyone has to sketch you know um, for people who are more into drawing you know the final product of the line drawing becomes very very critical very very important and for maybe people who like to paint or do 3d you know your drawing is more like a blueprint it's like a general direction so it doesn't need to be fully polished and fully rendered that's how I like to see my drawings is is kind of like in this line now this is the part that I like the most it's putting in little little set dressing elements people gear vehicles it tells a story about what's happening around this plane and in fact if we change what the set dressing elements are doing it'll change the story completely right so the main point of the story is not that there's an airplane at the airport but it's that the airplane is getting prepped prepped at the airport the prep part is the most important narrative at least for me uh, when it comes to this image because the little small set dressing elements is what makes you know a murder mystery a murder mystery versus you know uh, something else I don't know if that made sense but set dressing is super important might do if this is something interesting for you guys let me know uh, set dressing could be another video or a concept breakdown that I can uh, talk about it is a very important thing and it's really about paying attention to reality and paying attention to things that you see every day uh, but if that interests you let me know hit me in the comments now that I got the plane in there let's work on the architecture in the back one thing that I really like about this photo is the dynamic of shapes and what does that mean it means that there's a nice range of shapes and they're dynamic in a way where you know you see a long rectangle for the buildings in the back. You see a, a, a cylindrical shape with thin, flat wings for the airplane. You know, these shapes are very, very different. And in fact, there's not a lot of shapes that, that inter, um, interfere with each other. So what does that mean? It means that you know, there's not many circles in the photo. Um, the, the circles are only really reserved for the engines, right? The airplane engines under the plane, under the wings. We don't see a whole lot of cylinders either. This is just one big cylinder in the scene, which is basically the airplane fuselage. So I really like it when there's a simplicity to the shapes. If there was a lot of cylinders everywhere and a lot of circles everywhere, it might get a bit over, overly complex. And that's something that we want to avoid when it comes to um, sketching, because sketching is a is a simplified form of seeing things. You know. Um, it's, it's a way to shorthand so all right let's keep this going so um, let me see I think I'm just gonna keep working on the background now what I'm noticing here is that my ground plane is completely off all right I noticed that there's a ground plane you can kind of see a, a, a ground plane horizon line not a horizon line in the back but just where the building meets the ground the ground and the building meet right where the engine right where the you know the jet turbine engines are on the airplane right so right underneath it you see my line I'm trying to I'm trying to adjust right and these are some of the things that it's kind of interesting because I thought I was drawing it correctly earlier and trust me guys I've been drawing you know doing concept art for you know uh, a good little bit now and we're always adjusting <laughs> you know but like we never put down the right mark it's always put down a mark and then you kind of see and adjust from there and it's always tweaking you know so in, in design and in illustration and in concept I don't think it's it's that important to try to hit the perfect mark from the very first time you know it's about getting to that point eventually but it takes a few strokes it takes a few tries you know just like a warm-up swing that baseball players might do before they hit their big home run you know and speaking about baseball you know, we're trying to hit home runs with these drawings all the time, but in reality, uh, people that hit home runs, they actually strike out a lot. They actually strike out the most. So what does that say? You know, that means that we got to try a lot and not every single one of them is going to be that great. We might strike out a few, but those strikeouts are ones that we want to learn from, right? We want to understand, was I was I not following perspective or was I not looking at shapes clearly enough with simplicity you know sometimes when we fail 
there is a really good lesson to learn and hopefully that's something that we can i don't know maybe in this channel we can go over or just embrace you know failure is great failure is good don't be afraid of it shadow now this shadow right here is like is a graphic shape for me and i really have to squint my eyes down because in the photo the shadow is a little it's a little soft and a little ambiguous but with simplicity we want to make it more graphic right so i want to squint my eyes down i just want to see the overall shapes and to be honest some of it i'm kind of making it up because it's not in the photo but it might look good in the illustration or might look good in the in the uh, sketch so that's that's what it comes down to is trying to find that initial balance all righty so moving along i think i'm just you know trying to tighten it up and, and and i've said this in videos before anytime i'm just tightening things and i'm going over the same marks like over and over a, a little bit of a sense of noodling that's a sign that i'm stuck you know that means that i don't know what to do next and i know that about myself because because uh, i tend to do the same repeated sort of uh, things like that so now that i'm drawing the building in the back I, I feel like i'm i'm focused again i'm like okay okay james keep focusing on laying in all of the shapes first measure let's uh, make sure our proportions are good before we start to noodle you know before we start to add in any more smaller senses of detail let's just make sure that we're doing it um, and, and getting everything in there properly all right so so far so good okay I'm just kind of cleaning up some of the lines um, I'm actually drawing white on top of some of the lines to make them feel a little more laid in and, and kind of ghosted down kind of a nice thing to do uh, if you ever have a, a stroke that just feels a little too bold or a little too hard then you know lighten it up give it a little bit of a, a, a thinner line quality or just kind of paint some white on top of it just make the line kind of go away okay now just cleaning up fuselage trying to get some of the curves in there and again you can see I'm just I'm, I'm just kind of drawing the same part over and over. I'm, I'm, that means I'm I don't know what to do next. So let's take a moment. Let's regather and let's see what's going on. All right, now let's keep it going. So we have another sketch at the bottom or another photo reference underneath it. This is a front view scene, right? Same same type of environment. It's an airport fuselage airplane um, we see set dressing equipment on the ground all around it it's a great photo that shows some pretty decent scale like I like the size of the airplane next to that truck and we know that truck is pretty large because we know how big trucks are if anyone hasn't ridden on an airplane it's hard to understand how big these are you know these are ginormous ginormous vehicles you know wingspans of like hundreds of feet so it's kind of hard to gauge truly how big these vehicles and these airplanes are so it's really good to use some of these set dressing elements and as i'm laying this in you know i'm just using basic geometry i'm just trying to map in and get some clear landmarks that i can recognize such as the wings the landing gear um, even the i guess it's the gate that comes to attach to the door so people can uh, enter into the vehicle even those are great great landmarks so let's go ahead and use the same approach stay loose but I, I will warn you for some reason I starting to tighten up much more on this one you know and I don't know if it's if I was getting a little bit I don't know psyched out or or bothered by the amount of small details that I'm seeing but I definitely took a different approach on this one I wasn't being as as um, kind of gestural, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm working a lot tighter here. So as this continues, you know, I'm just trying to map in some general, general areas.
you can see a lot of the same thinking that's happening with the sketch up top. It's almost like using the same sort of uh, cooking techniques. And what that means is, you know, let's lay in the general shape of the plane. Let's put some good perspective marks on the ground. Let's get these identifiable landmarks that are easily seen. And the landmarks are more of like the dark accents. You squint your eye down, you can definitely see dark accents, um, you know, in the engines, the window for the cockpit, uh, the shadow underneath the plane, even the dark accents underneath the truck are really, really, really bold, right? And I feel like those are become, you know, especially when we squint our eye, the contrast between light and dark, that's, that's what I'm looking at. And that's what I want to draw. All right, let's keep it going. Now, on a side note, is uh, it's funny because when I'm actually at an airport, I don't draw. I just take photos because I want to draw it later. I don't know something about like drawing in person, kind of on site sometimes, just still kind of psychs me out in a weird way. But uh, yeah, I just I tend to not draw at the airport. I just take photos, and I, it's funny. I draw in the plane but not in the airport. <laughs> anyway, all of these uh, set dressing elements that we see that I'm starting to lay in, those are, those are grounded in perspective and they're grounded in reality. So let's just use the basic grid that we have on the ground to sort of help mm, lay in where they should belong, where, the, where they're sitting on the ground plane. And perspective, I cannot emphasize it enough. I know it's stuff that we learn really, really early on in art school. And in, you know, um, kind of an art education, it's a, it's a fundamental tool, but I can't tell, I can't emphasize it enough that perspective is like math. It can't, it shouldn't be wrong. And if it's wrong, then people can usually see it. There's, there's a way to optically see when perspective is wrong. So as a professional, it's important that we don't let perspective be a slip up. You know, it's something that, um, yeah, we, we want to avoid. So fundamentals are very, very important, especially as we're getting higher up the ladder. The fundamentals make your base, your foundation even wider so that let's say if the ladder ever feels a little unstable, there's a good foundation under it of perspective, of primitive shape drawing, of form and volume, of sketching and gesture and proportions. Those are all very they're not very basic because they're hard to actually master. You know, some of the masters never mastered it, but it's something that we constantly need to um, always strive because those are the fundamental building blocks of design and art, you know? Anyway, back to it. Let's get some more landmarks on this thing. So as you can see, I'm getting, uh, like, even while I'm drawing this, I know that I'm slowing down too much. And I feel like I'm rendering the drawing rather than trying to understand it in a study now I guess in a way um, I didn't really want to show this sketch because it didn't come out that great and not to the point where I'm like yeah I want to I want to I want to do this in a painting or something like that but what ended up happening was it became sort of like a a drawing that that was a fail for me you know it was a good attempt and I learned a ton but it's not the drawing that I wanted to pursue. And I want to show you guys some of the fails because only seeing some of the successes in a demo or in a tutorial can kind of get misleading because I feel that anytime there's a, there's a concept art piece, for every one piece that's done well, there's about a dozen or 20 or two dozen, like 24 pieces prior to that that were just attempts that didn't make it, that didn't make the cut, you know? And thankfully, there's art directors and people that help make these decisions. So it's just not on us, right? It'd be so hard to choose. You know, if you did 20 thumbnails for you to choose which one to do. But because there is an art director and they're able to see and know what the project is about in a little bit more in depth than a general artist, they're able to make those decisions for us and kind of help the pipeline along the way. So why am I saying that? It's because not everything's going to be great. Not everything's going to work super perfect. Um, but again, that's part of the job. And that's kind of just life, isn't it? So let's be under that understanding that, hey, art isn't a machine. And you're not a machine. You can't produce same things every day. 
Uh, the goal is to get better, but you know, sometimes there's better days and worse days, but the journey keeps on going. I don't know. That might be too a little philosophical or something like that, but if that rings true to you and you ever feel like that, hey, leave a comment because I know the rest of the community probably feels something similar. It's almost like I can talk about other things while you guys are watching this drawing because I'm just noodling. I'm like completely, <laughs> I feel like I'm completely wasting time. Not wasting time, but I should just be getting looser, um, getting more gestural. And you can see there's so much of the drawing that's not even in there, but I'm putting in these small details, right? And I feel like that's just drawing the eyeball before the rest of the head is laid in. So, um, as I'm making this video, it is a great reminder, uh, reminder for myself to keep on the basics, you know, uh, and, and, and really quickly we can get psyched out and almost put ourselves into this zone of, of rendering because we want, I don't know, because we want to see it, something like that. All right. But as we keep going, you know, and again, there are a lot of errors you know uh, a lot of uh, line marks and strokes that are just not that refined and this is okay because this is a sketch it is meant for us to learn all right now as we're going let's keep this going uh, let's lay in that truck you know nice side profile a little bit of a three-quarter view in perspective but again let's just try to get in the basic shapes you can see over here now in comparison to the other videos that I've had they're usually sped up a little bit but this is all real time you kind of see the decision making the mark making is is it's not trying to be too fast we're just trying to be deliberate it's funny that with two photos of the same subject matter and I'm using the same brush the same tools I'm not introducing any colors or anything like that but it's it's very interesting that the two sketches are drawn in a different way right um, I don't know about you guys but which method do you prefer the one up top or the one on bottom you know for myself it's the one up top because the one up top seemed more fluid efficient and I got to the image with less effort it felt like and I think that's important for us to kind of remember is how much effort these take is very, very important because, you know, some artists talk about a flow state when you design and you're drawing and painting and it just comes out really nicely, right? And like your decisions are being made in a more fluid manner. That's like a flow state that I think all artists really love to get into. And so, um, yeah, I don't know why I'm talking about that, but, uh, I'm not in the flow state here. <laughs> Seems a little harder. The top one felt so much smoother, you know. I don't know if you guys have ever really analyzed your art that way in sort of a in sort of a feeling kind of sensibility where it felt smoother and easier than another piece. Um, I just feel that that's better preparation and better understanding about what techniques you want to use. Whenever I try to do a piece or a painting that's like, oh, I'm going to do something that I've never done before and I'm going to use techniques I've never used before, those paintings usually don't come out that well. Um, it's more of an experiment than anything else. So let's continue with, with just laying. Now, it's getting a little repetitive because this piece is not moving and I, I keep emphasizing that and it's almost a little like torturous for me to watch this right now because like I, I wish I could have told myself James just focus focus on the big shapes you're focusing on the small shapes too much you don't know where to go you know it's kind of like adding little things here and there but we're not making the big impacts what is something that's large in here that might be able to work it could be the shadows you know, the shadow for the, the plane itself. Now as I squint my eye and I do the same squint test as the piece above, I see the shadows, but in the dark right bottom corner, okay, of that of that reference image. 
there's a whole lot of stuff happening in there with gradations and shadows and I'm gonna attempt to try to do this. But again, just like I was doing the drawing before, the one above it, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm doing it the same graphic way. And that's, that's what's kind of bothering me about, about this one, you know? I'm not doing it the same graphic way and I'm, I don't feel like I'm really getting the same visual appeal, you know, the visual dynamic. So I'm starting to think, hmm, maybe this reference wasn't the good one for me, you know? Maybe it wasn't the right one. So I'm going to give this a couple more shots and let's see how it goes. Uh, we'll definitely try to get, you know, my, my, my thought is, all right, let's do two studies of these photos really quick. And let's just take one of them and do a more refined study about it. You know, just a little bit more refined study. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. And I think I'm getting to the point where I'm saying, all right, I'm going to probably stop soon. And let's get to the other sketch. Okay. So here we are. Now, I think I'm going to just pause it here. Um, let's go ahead and start with a new sketch. I want to do the top reference, you know, the top sketch that I was doing for, of the rear view of the plane. I want to actually do that larger with more, with more clarity. So we're actually going to do the same sketch again, right? And it's, what, it's kind of amazing what happens if you draw the same sketch again and again and again. You start to really learn what, you were tr what we were trying to learn in the beginning. You know, first time for doing things is always, is always, you know, it's a good attempt, but we don't always get the best result, right? So why don't we see how this one goes? So the fuselage is coming out okay. You know, just a little bit slow, but, uh, and again, you can kind of see the, the dot mark making. Um, you know, there are artists that do cylinders, draw cylinders and circles like really, really well. You probably know some of them, right? Probably follow them, some really good art. Uh, this, this planet that we live on has so many amazing people. And I'm not one of those people that can do <laughs> cylinders and circles just like freehand really well. So I, my, my crutch to that is I, I tend to draw a lot of contour lines on top of shapes, just like you're seeing. And I like to dot things around so that I'm not trying to make the perfect mark, but you can kind of see the ellipse being formed. All right. So this sketch here um, that, we, that we have up top is, is my initial study. Um, and so what I'm trying to do now is basically go into an exercise of doing a more refined sketch based on the information that I know from the sketch previous. You know? So that's what I'm going to work on here. And it's a little bit on the slower side because mm -hmm. what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to measure, you know, I'm, I'm putting down these little just like dots to see and I'm trying to measure basically through like looking at landmarks on the photo. So right now in the beginning part, I'm moving around my pen and I'm just, I'm just kind of measuring. All right, let's get the wing laid in. You know, I'm, I'm tr really trying to pay attention to the, 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 where the wing is meeting the fuselage. Cause in the photo, it's a little unclear. There's like, there's, there's information there that definitely lets me know that the wing is touching the fuselage in that spot, but I don't have the clarity enough to see it, to draw the connections, you know, draw that, draw that transition of one shape to another. Um, so it was a little bit of a, 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 a task right there to kind of see that. All right, let's, let, let's put in some more landmarks. Yeah, talking about ellipses. Oh man, this is my ellipses definitely need some practice. But we know generally what's supposed to be there. So let's try. All right, let's try it again. But all right, let's try a circle, like a circle marquee or something. Maybe use a little Photoshop to help me out. All right, so I'm gonna use a circle marquee. I'll stroke the selection with like a three or five millimeter. Uh, or pixel, um, actually it was a two pixel, and now I have a circle. All right, 
so let's get that circle on new layer and we can use that to initially lay in some of our um, ellipses and, and engines and stuff like that all right here we go so let's take that and let's go so it's trying to size it find the right shape find the you know find the right overall um, proportions to everything and you know what's interesting about this whole sketch sketch that I'm working on is everything is about proportions right like imagine if the wings were really small and the fuselage was like twice as wide and the engines were even smaller 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 it would look kind of it would look a lot different right it would almost the proportions would make it feel kind of cartoony or whatever but you know I guess that's one of the things about uh, concept design is proportions really make people see things in a different way, right? Like just look at people. Um, you know, proportions of people can look different from tall and thin and lanky to you know more stout and short and wider. So those those are all things that that kind of that kind of matter. All right, I got stuck in a little bit of a Photoshop glitch right here I pressed a button that I couldn't figure out so let me come back to this part one sec and we're back yeah I figured it out I don't know what I did but I pressed a button and it got me this weird clipboard mode you guys ever run into that you know, you're just jamming along in Photoshop and then suddenly it gets into a weird mode and you're like, I don't know how to get out of this. Yeah, this engine is taking a little bit of time. But once I get one in there, hopefully the idea is I can kind of take that and, and just duplicate it again and, and hopefully get some more going really easily. There we go. A little bit more efficient, a little bit faster. Got another engine over there. We'll duplicate that circle again, make it a little bit smaller so we can get the exhaust part of the turbine. Actually, it's not exhaust. Like I said, that'd be that's where the thrust comes out. Been watching some um, airplane and military jet documentaries lately. Just learning a little bit more about airplanes and automobiles and you know vehicles that fly and stuff it's very very cool um, and so that's that's something that I, maybe I can touch base on while, while, while we're sketching here is how do we learn more about things how do we learn more about this world that can inform us to become more impactful designers and the more we know about the world I think the more we're able to actually take those things that make it believable and put them into our designs right that's something that I think is, is really important so anytime I get an opportunity I don't really find myself watching too much um, you know too much too many things that are like sitcoms and comedies and stuff like that but lately I've been watching just a ton of documentaries to just learn a bit more and it's you know what's kind of fun and interesting is that with documentaries it's something that you know you don't just you can't just really easily google and find the information you know or wikipedia and just find the basic info these are subtle uh, bits of uh context that really really matter and can probably make a big impact on your piece as well as you know making your art feel different than other people's art you know i think that's so important you know All right, so now on the other side of the jet, or on the other side of the airplane, we have the turbines over there. Now these turbines, again, they're not just a sphere, but they're cylindrically shaped. They are a cylinder. So the task right now is to make sure that we get these turbines to almost feel like we're getting a, a sense of volume as, as they're moving down the, down the wing. So again, as we're kind of laying this in, just general proportions, let's get it laid in. We can make adjustments as we go. 
and again nothing needs to be perfectly laid in because we can we can adjust things Ooh, I'm gonna draw the ellipse on this one getting a little courage I think it's because you know as we're doing one two three and now the fourth engine it feels like there's like a just a little bit more uh, stability or foundation to the piece so I can kind of just draw it in that's just my thought process on that all right I made the brush a little bit bigger almost thinking that this could be a size of maybe a sharpie marker or something like that but now it gives me the ability to start putting in some darker landmarks get some of the pop that I'm really really looking for and and start to get this image to read properly now again and I talked about this in another video but I think I'll do another one on this topic that I'm about to share right now which is is when we draw and we're sketching for a painting purpose we can kind of put down the information differently you know and the information that's really important to see is dark and light shapes dark and light shapes because remember when we're painting we're not painting lines we're painting surfaces right and so being able to see that there's a surface that's lit versus a surface that's in shadow those are what's kind of the the painter's eye mentality now for the sketch we're drawing in line so we're actually just looking a lot at outer shape we're looking at forms you know we're looking at what these shapes are doing and so because one is based in line and another one's based on surfaces you know there's a different way to use sketching to help us out with uh, you know for the purpose of drawing or for the purpose of painting hope that made sense but if that's something that interests you let me know in the comments you know I'm asking for a lot of comments right <laughs> but I don't know uh, what other ways there for us to communicate you know uh, what's working what's not working just let me know and uh, you know I, I I also teach a lot of this material uh, at brainstorm school it's an online uh, concept design school that's uh, you know for games and film and animation just check it out brainstormschool.com but at brainstorm I teach a lot of these types of classes so if you're ever interested in in maybe finding out more or learning more in depth you know, just give it a look and see if it interests you you know even though this is art uh, and I'm just trying to show basic studies you know the same thing happens when I'm trying to design maybe a, a robot for transformers or a really cool vehicle for Call of Duty um, or a battle scene you know for for Avatar for example but you know these are things that uh, you know we use these fundamental skills just like we're doing a study of a photo and we use them in the same way to create something that's a little bit more conceptual or you know based in a in a fictional world you know we're using the same techniques so you know uh, myself along with a lot of other artists we love to do studies and do quick studies just to get mileage and and a little bit of practice in okay so let's keep going on this plane we have a little bit more uh, development here we're gonna start putting in the accents adjusting some of the proportions here yeah, don't be afraid to just adjust things. This is your art. You own it. You, this is yours. And I think it's very important that we uh, uh, just remember that, you know? Don't be afraid to, to erase a big mark. Okay, now looking at the airplane in the photo, I could see that the rear tail rudder, I think that's what it's called, but the rear tail is like a little wing that sticks off the side. You can see that protrude out from, from the silhouette of the fuselage. In the photo, you could see that. And now that part's starting to bug me because that means that my measurements are, are kind of off. So made a slight adjustment, made the fuselage a little bit smaller. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to jump into some of the landmarks now, some of the key set dressing. So let's go into that. All right, let's put some... Again, this... this stuff should look pretty familiar right it's just some perspective lines on the ground and I'm going to use that as a way to start laying in the shadow for the airplane nice and graphic 
more graphic the better because I think our eyes our eyes don't like to see shapes that we don't recognize you know it's very important that our eyes see shapes that are recognizable and so it becomes familiar and therefore understandable and if there's shapes that we don't understand you know what ends up happening our eye or whoever's looking at it whoever's looking at it, their eye their brain makes up the information that's ambiguous their brain makes up the information that is unclear so that means that people can see it in different ways and that's what's kind of interesting about uh, clarity versus you know ambiguity so something that's just unclear something that's just ambiguous you know try to maybe put something very clear and understandable right next to it so that it takes over the control and people don't pay attention to the ambiguity but they pay attention to the clarity hope that's making sense so for example the the landing gear it's just these marks you can't really see it it's very ambiguous but right in front of it you'll see that there's a vehicle this like rectangular shape that's a lot more clear there's more clarity in that shape so hopefully the eye is going to look at that that vehicle over the landing gear all right zooming out just to check proportions just a little bit shaving down some of the shadows just kind of seeing how it's looking all right so far so good okay we're working along okay so what's coming up next now there's a couple of details that are on the plane you know we can lay those in some of the details on the wings and you know other elements on the fuselage again landmarks from here I think it's going to be important that we start laying in the rest of the environment I think I'm starting to learn from my from my previous sketches right like don't get into the details yet so you know I already kind of remember ah, I need to start doing the background so let's get into that part and also I apologize my voice is a little uh, it's a little shot these days I lost my voice last week um, just being a little sick and then uh, but a lot better but a little froggy voice still but it should be okay uh, by next week yeah look at those shapes straight edge the uh, the nice curvature from sort of a dome shaped element on the architecture Everything's rectangular and very right angled. So I just like the dynamics of the shape. And when I was researching for some photos, it was it was it was kind of immediate that some photos I like immediately. And some photos I there's just an initial reaction. I'm like, oh it looks cool, but it's not it's not that one, you know? And I felt like it's important for us to also develop a sense of taste when it comes to selecting good reference. Because not all reference is good. As we saw, the, the two references that we had earlier, one sketch came out a lot better. Was that due to the reference? It could have been. Um, but, you know, sometimes reference can lead, you a less, lead us in a lot of different ways, right? Okay, so here we go. I'm going to do a little bit of Photoshopping here. Just going to change some proportions of things, move things around. Um, I just feel like that wing is a little bit too long and can get moved in. Right, so let's just grab and select move that over okay feels a little bit better again proportions just checking proportions that's what sketching is really about you know that's why we don't paint from the very beginning we kind of have a tendency to just do these initial studies get the idea flowing uh, so that it's not like you're doing it for the very first time in fact, this is the second time that we're doing the same sketch from the same reference. So I feel a little bit more confident. You know, I feel a little bit more confident. It's like I've been down this road before. And so I recognize where there's potholes and where there's a tree and, you know, uh, where there's the ice cream store and <laughs> stuff like that, you know. So as we're moving along, laying in the background laying in the architecture again I'm looking at the bigger shapes you know the background buildings have a nice distribution of big medium and small in fact most designs that that react well to the eye has a balance of big medium and small 
And what is that balance? Usually there's like a ratio, like a 70, 30, 80, 20, you know, 60, 40. Usually it's not 50, 50 because then that balance becomes a little bit too equalized. So um, maybe I shouldn't even call it balance because balance is like half, half, right? That's how you get balance, but it should be an imbalance of detail versus rest. So like, 30% detail, 70% rest, or even vice versa, you know? All right, so getting some of the set dressing back there, you know, these rectangular shapes, what are they? They could be containers, they could be uh, uh, big pieces of equipment, they could be luggage or even trucks. But right now they're just place holding. And I'm gonna use the primitive shapes as much as possible to kind of get that going. Rectangles are going to represent some of those set dressing elements as vehicles and the dark accents that I'm painting in or drawing in right now Those are areas that are the dark accents, right? The, the areas that are recessed or just have no light and again Sketching for the purpose of painting, right? We're gonna use those dark accents to really maybe help pronounce the silhouette of the plane just a little bit more And so let's keep continuing with the rest of the environment. It's putting down dots. It's kind of interesting, right? Like, I don't know why I put that dot on the, uh, on the tail wing right there. But again, I think I'm just, I'm figuring out what I'm supposed to do next. You know, perspective is also something that's very important. It's not just about how we, having lines meet up, but it's also about seeing things, seeing objects being foreshortened in space. You know, th seeing things being uh, kind of pushed back and dissipated so that so that you could see the scale get smaller. You know, sort of like a, uh, street lamps on a, on a street, like they get smaller and smaller as they go down the street. And the spacing also becomes tighter and tighter and tighter, right? Those are all rules of perspective. So we want to make sure that we're getting those in there as well. Love how those little vehicles are breaking up the dark accents uh, in the building. Because it would otherwise it'd just be like a lot of rectangular squares, dark squares everywhere. But I love how the vehicles are breaking up that language and giving it a little bit more complexity. You know, it, it creates a lot of vibration around there that makes it fun to look at. There we go. Now, just as a, you know, heads up, I am using shift and drawing the line down. That's why I'm getting such straight lines. Because I'm really good at doing straight lines, but horrible at ellipses, right? Mm -hmm. No, I'm just using some Photoshop. Um, you know, shift and click or shift and draw the line just to get the straight ups, you know, verticals and horizontals, the ups and sides. Now, you know, there's like a framing that's on the reference. You can see like there's like a kind of like a checker pattern um, grid that's on the surface of the building. So I was thinking, man, should I do that? But it'll look super, super busy. It might look a little too much. So I'm just going to indicate it and then kind of take it from there. Working on the left side of the building as well, the left side of the composition. And I'm just looking again at the little details. There's a lot of verticals and horizontals that kind of make up this whole uh, very complex looking scene. And so complexity is best, is best approached with simplicity, right? Just remember, any complex scene that we want to create, we got to approach it very, very simplistically to be able to capture the big, medium, and small and then we can just kind of own it from there. All right, so we got some lines on the ground. That means we're getting closer, you know? We're getting closer, closer, wrap this up. Getting some perspective lines on the ground. Love seeing that because the ground plan is such a big part of this composition. It's absolutely important that we get the evidence of good perspective and foreshortening here. So just like the sketch above it, you know, kind of pushing those uh, radiating lines that are on the ground plane having it really shoot down into a vanishing point to see a lot of foreshortening now some more set dressing 
as I look at the photo, longer and longer, and I don't know how long you guys, like, really stare at reference because, you know, sometimes when we're just driving around and looking at ads, we have a tendency to maybe only look at things for a few seconds. But this photo right here, this photo that we selected for this sketch, we've been actually looking at it for almost how much time now? 45 minutes. Almost 40, 50 minutes of time uh, looking at references. You know, we had two, two drawings or, or two photos earlier, but you kind of know what I mean. And it's so important that we look at the photo. You know, my old figure drawing instructors used to tell me it's 90% looking and 10% drawing. Isn't that crazy? Like, there's always under this impression that we, it's like 90% drawing and 10% looking, but that's not it. We have to, we have to observe very, very carefully. All right. So let me go over a couple of things about my marks, mark making here. So they have a, three different types of line qualities that I want to share with you guys. The first one is like a lay-in. The second one is more of a drawing. And the third one helps me with the dark accents. So with this oil brush, and I have a tutorial about brush tips, you check it out if you, if you want to download this brush pack. Uh, check out the video about brush tips and how to. There's a downloadable brush pack for there, in there for you. Um, and, and this brush is, is in it, so definitely try to take a look. But as we, as we continue on this, you know, I'm using this basically one Photoshop brush for everything. You know, this brush, depending on if you make it larger or smaller, becomes like a pencil to a pen to like a Sharpie. And if any of you are used to drawing with those materials, I use those materials a lot when I draw my sketchbook, pen and Sharpie. So when I do it in Photoshop, it's, it's, it's pretty natural, right? Like it doesn't feel super foreign. And I think that's what's important about designing is that we need to make sure that we use familiar tools, just like a carpenter, you know, they use their familiar tools. All right, so now new layer, multiply, let's put in our gray tones, okay? Not the black accents, the gray tones. So anything that's sort of a grayer tone, not the black accent, right? Black accent is like a absent of light where there's the shadow or the recesses inside of the garages, okay? Or the dark accents right underneath the vehicles. Those are the app, those are the areas that are absent of light. But what I'm painting right now are more graphic elements. You know, technically the tail, the the tail wing, the vertical one, I should have uh, I should have made that gray too, but whatever. For next time. All right, let's keep it going. Just going to kind of sharpie with this brush, all of that area in there. And I'm using the same brush for the whole thing up until this point. Think about little accents. Now I'm looking deeper into the photo a bit to try to see if I can pick up any other bits of info. You know, like painted graphics on the vehicles, painted graphics on the floor, on the ground, where there might be other people, so on and so forth. All right, let's paint. Again, looking at the photo reference, trying to find all the elements of these sort of halftone accents that I can that I can do. And one thing is, I like how some of the dark accents, it actually pushes the silhouette of the plane forward a bit more. Kind of like how that effect. It, it was something in the photo that it's obviously in the photo, but it wasn't something that I picked up until I actually started doing the gray accents right now, you know? So it's kind of interesting that like this photo can reveal more as you as you just look at it longer, you know, it's kind of cool. Now on this stage, I feel like the darks are a little too dark. So I'm going to lighten them up almost to like a mid value gray, like a 50% gray. And now I feel like we see the separation between light, medium and dark, the trifecta, light, medium and dark. I feel like there's more range to them making it a little bit easier to see. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of form shadow, but I'm using the wrong brush. I'm, I'm still using that, that drawing brush. When in actuality, I'm gonna to need to use an introduction of one other brush, and it's going to be a soft brush. Again, 
you want more information on brush tips and stuff, please check out my other tutorial about brush tips and how to. Um, and uh, let's let's get the brushes in your hands and let's try some of this stuff. A little bit of cleanup, a little bit of grouping, um, but in just a little bit, I'm going to add in a, a softer gradation. If you look at the fuselage, at the belly of the fuselage, right there, you're going to see that there's a soft gradation wrapping around the, uh, the fuselage, right? So once I lay in some of these windows and I'm like, oh my goodness, what? This is kind of, it's kind of tedious. Hold on. Let me figure out a better way to do this. So rather than doing that, let me just get rid of that real quickly. But rather than doing that, I'm just going to make a whole row of windows and let's see if I can you know, use a little bit of transform tool to get it in there. And again, keep it sketchy. Keep it uh keep it pretty loose, you know, gestural. Alright, so I have two windows, two becomes four, four four and six, flatten those down, six becomes twelve, and then now we can just create a lot of a lot of row. Like rows and rows and rows of windows. Alright. So let's distort, put it on the actual vehicle, and let's see how that looks. Yeah, not too bad, right? At least they're lining up and, you know, they feel pretty uniform. They feel uniform, but also, like, there's a little bit of variation in, in the shapes that it, it feels like it's hand-applied, hand which, for me, I love the way that looks when it's, when it's on a digital sketch or any kind of sketch. Little door over there. Maybe another door. Just little accents you know these little accents that we're adding in like people and cones and windows and doors these are things that are that they add to the design and hopefully they don't take away from the silhouette because if they if it messes with the silhouette then we're actually kind of going backwards you know um, we don't want to we don't want to get the piece to feel less dynamic if that makes sense so all of these little elements should really be sitting on top and if you feel like the piece is shifting too much or even changing take a look at where you're adding the details and let's kind of refocus all right we're getting down to the last about 10 minutes of the sketch so let's see what else we can do um, and and here's something fun is is positive negative positive negative so any of these details that are in front of the shadow, I'm going to make sure that they're a bit more clear with a lighter silhouette. And then there's people that are standing in the shadows that are going to be dark. So dark, light, positive, negative. We get to see overlaps. We get to see a little bit more clarity when it comes to that. So that's something that I definitely like to implement into my drawings as well. You know, overlap as an environment designer, uh, overlap is one of the key elements to show space and distance uh, because there's no way to refute if something's in front of it like an overlap how the space is working all right let's do my lasso tool let's get the shape of that fuselage and let's paint in a little bit of form shadow dark underbelly on this fuselage so I'm gonna get my soft airbrush there we go and even just right there and maybe a little bit of the wing just right there gives us enough soft gradation so that we can see it maybe also do a little bit of the engine as well the bottom of the engine right because it is a it, it is a spherical shape or a cylindrical shape excuse me just like the fuselage so perhaps there's a there's a similar type of um application there a little bit of that engine a little bit of that engine too so this last layer even though if we squint our eye it's, it's it's very subtle but it gives the fuselage a 3d form you know it gives it a little bit more understanding about form because the light is hitting the surface and the shadows on the surface too so here we go it's getting pretty close i've got a few more minutes here but we're just going to add in a couple of last details couple of things on the ground um, you know things that are just uh, fun set dressing elements just a little bit more designing 
again all this stuff isn't really going to change the piece altogether too much and if it does that means i'm going in the wrong direction but hopefully these are things that are just like icing on the cake it's meant to sit on top of it drawing some numbers I wouldn't recommend drawing a number skewed in perspective, but just <laughs> maybe draw it flat and then skew it with uh, your your uh, transform tool. So now we're at station 15. Our Boeing jet is getting fueled and loaded for takeoff. The crew is ready. Uh, you see all of the maintenance crew checking engines, checking all the functions and everything, making sure it's going. There's a hustle bustle in this airport. There's a lot of activity. And, uh, you know, this is pretty much where I'm going to start wrapping up this video. But again, thanks everybody for joining. It's been a super awesome privilege to just share some artwork with everyone. And I really appreciate everyone's feedback. Um, I really look forward to reading the reviews and, and the comments. And, and everyone is offering such great insight on the stuff that they would like to see so with that being said i would you know keep the suggestions coming i'm jotting them down and making a list of things and i've got a few more stuff coming up really soon that that hopefully would interest you um and yeah that that'll start getting us right there so again over here just kind of adding in stuff painted lines on the ground just messing around and so just remember Reference is very important. Um, on my last airport sketch, I did draw from reference, but I just didn't have the reference open. So uh, it's, it's great that I could show you guys where I'm going from here. Um, but get some good reference. If this airport sketch is kind of fun and you want to practice some techniques, give it a shot. Tag me, you know, in your post or, you know, give me a shout out somehow. Let me know that you did it and I'd love to take a look. And let's just keep sketching and drawing. I think I had a, a thought to add in another vehicle somewhere. This whole positive negative thing is, is kind of fun. So I'm going to add in another vehicle here, kind of coming in, maybe offloading some passengers or I don't know, something to that degree. Alrighty, so I do have a couple more airport sketch. Um, tutorials come in I love drawing this this material so it's it's really fun for me to do that but I do have a question what other things would you like to see in terms of a sketch tutorial you know um, maybe composition maybe I don't know anything but uh, let me know in the comments and I'd love to try to see if I can make something you know pretty quickly for everybody yeah let's get this vehicle laid in but anyhow Thanks for joining again. Uh, we will definitely catch you on the next one. Thanks for your support. And let's keep drawing. All right. We'll talk to you later. Take care, everyone. Thanks for joining another episode of The Process. I'm going to let this video play out. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.